Anything? Come on up. All right. You can just have a seat for now. Uh, if you testify, I'll place you under oath. But otherwise, uh, we're just going to have a discussion a little bit here. So, uh, but we do need to hear you so that the court reporter can take everything down. So, uh, you have been subpoenaed by the defense. I can't uh, even really. Okay. Do that. You've been subpoenaed by the defense uh, to answer certain questions about uh, being with George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. Uh, what you observed about his physical condition at various points in Cup Foods and basically a time frame on when you were with him that day and what you observed about him. Uh, specifically, I think focusing mostly on the time in Cup Foods, but then also in the motor vehicle before the police came to the window. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's my, and you're uh, willing to answer those questions yes. about George yes. Floyd. Okay. Um, this, the parties also have the right to ask you in order to test whether your perceptions are accurate mm -hmm. on whether you were under the influence of drugs or alcohol that day. Are you willing to answer yes. that question? Yes. Okay. Am I or him? Are you willing to answer the question well, whether you were under the oh, influence yes. of drugs or alcohol? Yes, I was not. <laughs> okay. We're not going to be eliciting an opinion from you whether George Floyd was under the influence, just for how he looked okay. uh, and you know how he acted. Yep but not an opinion about whether he was under the influence. Okay. But the lawyers, in order to make sure that the jury knows whether to consider your evidence and how much weight to give it, is whether you were sober or under the influence. Are, are you willing to answer that question? Yes. Okay. Now you understand, I don't find that those questions would uh, expose you to criminal liability, but you do have a Fifth Amendment right mm -hmm. uh, not to incriminate yourself. Uh, do you need time to talk to a lawyer? Or? No. And I have limited the lawyers to those topics so as not to get anything that might tend to incriminate you that you're not expecting. Okay? Yep. Do you have any questions? No. Do you need time to talk to a lawyer? No. Okay. Ready to go then? Yes. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to bring the jury back in, and then I'm going to have you stand up so I can swear you in, and then we'll go from there. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Great. Let's bring in the jury. And you can just remain seated when the jury comes in. Are you going to stand up? You can stay seated. Oh. I'll ask you to stand to be sworn, but just follow my directions, you'll be fine. Mr. Nelson, you may call your next witness. Your Honor, the defense calls Shawanda Hill. Ms. Hill, if you could stand right in the witness chair. Or actually, there is fine. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury? So the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right, have a seat, please. And before we begin, uh, we're going to have you state your full name, spelling each of your names. Shawanda, S-H-A-W-A-N-D-A, -A -A, Renee, R-E-N-E-E, -E -H Hill, H-I-L-L. -L. Mr. Nelson? Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Hill. Hi. Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, I just have a few questions about May 25th of 2020. Do you recall that date? Yes. On that date, were you at the Cup Foods located in Minneapolis? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Did you run into anybody that you knew while you were there? Yes, George Floyd. And uh, while you were at the Cup Foods or in the Cup Foods, did you have an opportunity to observe Mr. Floyd's behavior, demeanor, things of that nature? Yes. How would you describe Mr. Floyd's behavior 
while inside of the cup foods? Happy, normal, talking, alert. Okay. Did uh, you? Uh, did he offer to give you a ride? Yes. A ride to wherever it was My you were house. going. Okay. And um, so, did you go to his car with him? Yes. Once you got into the car, did you observe any changes to his demeanor? When we were in the car for the first like eight minutes, we were talking and you know, saying hugging, you know, what I'm saying talking about what we were about to do. And then I got a phone call. And so I was on the phone for the rest of the time until the little boys came to the truck, to the car. He fell asleep at that time. So at some point during the course of the time that you were in the car with Mr. Floyd, Mr. Ho Floyd suddenly fell asleep. Yes. Right? And the phone call you received, was that from your daughter? Yes. And so you were talking with your daughter during that time? Yes. Um, and you described, uh, would you agree that at, at some point, uh, some you said some little boys are those employees of the yes. store. <laughs> Sorry, yes. That's okay. Um, the store employees came and approached the car. Correct. Right? Yes. And at that point, Mr. Floyd suddenly fell asleep. He was already asleep. He was already sleeping. Yes. When they came to the car, and when they came there, I tried to wake him up. They tried to wake him up. I tried to wake him up over and over. And his friend tried to wake him up, and he kept. He woke up. Then he'll say something, uh, he made a little gesture, you know, and nodded back off. Okay. Was he that, did a, that a couple times. Was that a, kind of a sudden change from how you observed him in the store to the car? Yes, but he already told me in the store he was tired because he had been working. I'm going to object. There is an objection. Meeting? Hold on. Objection? Grounds? Meeting? Yes. The answer is stricken. Um, and so at some point, did the uh, store clerks leave the side of the car? Yes, I told them that I would wake them up and send them in there because I didn't have the money on me. I used my money. So. Okay. And did you continue to try to rouse yes. Ms. Mr. Floyd? Wait, wait until it finishes the question so that we don't overlap. Okay? Because the court report is making everything done. It's really hard. To be oh, okay. Okay? Thanks. Thank you. Um, so did you continue to try to... Uh, awaken Mr. Floyd? Yes, I tried a couple times, but then, you know, I just let it go for a minute because I was back on the phone and all right, and, the rest out. and did the store clerks come back to the car a second time? No. Okay. And um, were you, uh, at some point, the police officers approached the car? Yes. And um, Mr. Floyd uh, was aroused by the police? Yes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Ray. Good morning, Ms. Hill. I just have a couple of follow-up questions for you, okay? Yes. Um, so during the period that you were with Mr. Floyd in the store, uh, he was, uh, you said he was alert? Yes. Friendly? Yes. Talkative? Happy talking, yes. And, laugh, hug. Yeah. and when you went uh, out to the store, he walked by himself out to the store? Yes. In fact, did a little dance as he went out to the yes. car? Yes. We just have to make sure that you yes. wait till the question's done so we aren't talking over each other, okay? Just, I know it's a hard habit to break. You just have to be careful with that, okay? And when you got back to the car, um, at some point he nodded off. Yes. Um, but you were able to wake him, correct? Yes. And talk to him? Yes. But he wasn't that coherent at the time. He was just awakening. Yes. And nodded off again? Yes. And at some point, the police officers walked up, correct? Is that yes? Yes. And, um, and then he, uh, well, you woke him up when the police officers walked up, correct? Yes. And so then he was awake. He, yes, you just want me to say yes or no, explain what do you want me to do? Well, explain. I want to explain. Okay, thank you. 
So he, when I tried to wake him up, he woke up the second time I said, Floyd, the, the police is here. It's about the $20 bill wasn't real. I kept saying, baby, get up. The police was out. So he looked, and we looked to the right, and he had the police. He tapped on the window with a, with a um, flashlight. And I'm like, Floyd. And so he turned back around again. He's like, what, what? And I was like, baby, that's the police. Open the door, roll down the window, whatever he told him to do. So he looked back, and he inst when he seen the man, the man had the gun at the window at the, at, when we looked back to him. So he instantly grabbed the wheel, and he was like, please, please don't kill me. Please, please don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. What did I do? Just tell me what I did. Please don't kill me. Please don't shoot me. And I'm like, Floyd, baby, it's not. You said explain. I'm trying I did, to explain what state he was in, sir. I did. And I, I have to ask some questions. Um, so I'm sorry to cut you off. I really am. It's all right. But I want to go back and just cover one thing quick. Cause you, where were you sitting in the vehicle? In the back right passenger seat. Okay. And so when officers the came. Back passenger seat. Yeah. Were there two officers that came to the vehicle? Yes. So one came to the passenger side and one to the driver's side? Yes. So initially you saw one officer to your right on the passenger side, correct? No, I seen, I was up like in, you know, I'm trying to wake him up, so I'm in the middle, like at the time, you know, when the police were there. That's how I was able to see him too, just we both looked at the same time. Yeah. And um, when he was, uh, during this time period, mm -hmm. coming out from Cup Foods and being in the vehicle, mm -hmm. did he complain of shortness of breath at all? No. Uh, did he complain of chest pains at all? No. And other than being sleepy or nodding off a little bit, did he seem no. abnormal to you in any way? Not at all. And did he seem startled when the officer pulled a gun on him? Very. I have nothing further, Gar. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it, while you were in the car, or prior to getting in the car, Mr. Floyd appeared to you to be normal, correct? Yes. When he got in the car, he fell asleep, correct? We talked for a while, then he fell asleep. And then ultimately, you had to make several efforts to yes. try to wake him up. Yes. I'm not going to Thank you, Ms. Hill. We appreciate you coming in. Uh, you are excused. Thank you.